if the audience doesn't believe it. If they go wow. mm. that, you know that's outrageous. What Mark has mm. just said. Yes. No. Mm. If the audience doesn't so you, buy you're, it, you're saying you have no mm. responsibility to those people's actual lives. Um. Yes and no. <laughs> I'll give you. I'll give you another example. I, I worked on a, a piece with Tapel Music Baroque Ensemble about the, the Chevalier Saint Georges, and uh, I was writing fast and loose because my command of the French language is not good, and all the historical record of this guy was in French. So uh, I thought, oh, well, I'll, so I'll do that. Wait a minute, you're writing a play about Chevalier Saint George and you didn't bother to learn his language? Uh, I did learn the language. I was forced to learn the language. Oh, okay, I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> but uh, um, right. what happened was I, I started to uh, uh, painfully go through the French and, and I, mean, I got better at it. But uh, we had a, a final sort of rehearsal with the uh, uh, orchestra and it was a very short uh, rehearsal time. And uh, I'd written this thing, and I'd put in a mention of this guy called Amati, who was the sort of uh, uh, guy who taught Stradivarius how to make his violin. And so I threw in a little joke about Amati, and there was this sort of titter from the, from the orchestra. And afterwards I said, what was that? And the lead violinist brought up the violin that he'd made. <laughs> oh. And suddenly I thought, I owe this a little bit more deeper okay. look. Like, All right. All right. You got me there. Because I'm just a kid from Willowdale, man. Yeah. And like, I was... Playing fast and loose, so I did. Yeah. I did have to take into that, take that into account. But no, when you're writing, how can you do that? Your self censorship is the worst. Mm -hmm. Who cares about who cares about Richard Zunian? Yeah, I know. Here's yeah. the worst. Yeah, it's true. Here's the worst censor right here. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and so you, you got to go when you're yeah. first writing. You got to go. And there was a play I saw once that actually. It's funny. I think it's important for playwrights to feel that they have the ability to cross the line if they so choose. But also as audience members, we can go, wow, that's crossing the line. Um, and one example is Jason Sherman's reading Hebron. Anybody see that? Mm -hmm. Where, I mean, I love Jason Sherman's work, and actually I really like the play, but halfway through the play, the main character has sex with Rabin's daughter on a desk. And I thought, wow, that's crossing a line. <laughs> wow, because Rabin's daughter's alive, very much so. And Jason Sherman had a very, he had a very personal political point to make about the deification of Rabin and what, and what she, he felt was what she was doing about her father's uh, memory. And I thought, well, that's interesting. <laughs> and you have every right to do that as a playwright, but also as an audience member, I have every right to go, that's going too far. Could you define that line for me? Oh, Andrew? I think it's, oh, I don't think it's definable. I think it's, I think it changes because it's and shifts. Uh, but in that case, what exactly was it? Yes, as a, as a historian, I, I take issue with you playing fast and loose with history in your plays. I think really what you have to do is take one of two courses, write a play in which you take real characters and put them into the play, or you write a real historical drama that is based on one of the common themes of, of drama, like the dysfunctional family. But to take history and play fast and loose with it, I think is, is distorting it and it's also hurting the next generation who looks at a play and thinks, you know, what's, why couldn't they tell the truth? So there are enough, the truth didn't tell the truth. Marlowe didn't tell the truth. There are enough real I'm themes sorry. in it. And if you write a the, play... The real things we're talking about are, are, are truthful things that the audience enjoys watching. I mean, you're talking about the, the classic dysfunctional family. That's a, that's a dramatic choice. Yeah. You don't, don't have, it doesn't have to be historically accurate. People put dysfunctional families on stage all the time. We look to the dramatic moments within history. I, fast and loose, you know, maybe I regret saying that, but <laughs> the fact is there's no. been far too much really boring, bad historical drama than there has ever been with playwrights <coughs> playing fast and loose with the truth. If you look at Hollingsworth, and we keep bringing Hollingsworth up, we should mm -hmm. phone him and give him a check, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, I was It's just incredibly broad. Have you ever seen any of Hollingsworth plays? Yeah. No? I, I was just thinking of one reverse, though, where yeah. a playwright wrote a book, or a play about a dysfunctional family and a, and a power struggling what character. What Canadian play isn't it about a dysfunctional family? <laughs> I mean, True. you've got French is uh, leaving home right now. That is the quintessential yeah, Canadian yeah. play. And it's only till now that it's been remount remounted, which is bizarre. But yeah, it's but become yeah. like that is the kitchen sink Canadian dysfunction right there. But sometimes, I really but sometimes they come, it comes back and it becomes real. <clears throat> Because oh, recently, I really, yeah, recently, I recently at Soul Pepper, I went to see Jean Gabriel Borkman. Mm. And partly into the play, everybody started looking at each other and saying, Conrad Black. 
It was him, mm -hmm. honestly. Right. Right. And, and Ibsen had captured a universal figure yeah. in this play, mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and now suddenly we're, we're looking at it today, and we see a, a real play, a real character. Well, that's, you, that's when you know that the play is clicking, when the, when the person, you know, from a personal audience point of view, you go, I know that character. And there is the best writing is the one where the character walks on stage and you know them right away. Mm -hmm. But they mm -hmm. still do something that surprises you, mm -hmm. you know. The sad truth is that we're, it's not that we choose to play fast and loose with, loose with history. The stage has its demands. Yeah. This, the the thea theatrical truth, the moment you put actors into a story on stage, the stage will make its demands on you, the playwright, and you must obey the stage. There's no, you can choose not to, but then people won't come to see your play. And it's unfortunate, I feel really bad for historians, I do, because ultimately it must be very frustrating. The desire to see the truth of, of a historical figure is so deep and so strong. And sometimes you, I feel this as a writer, I say, it would be great to just show the person exactly the way with all these fascinating little bits of information about this character it's the, that would make it real and factual. However, it's not dramatic and it's frustrating. And it's you're actually talking superior. about the Coastal Utopia. Uh, Tom Stopper mm -hmm. wrote a trilogy based on, in 19th century Russia based on the philosophers and the, and the poets and the whatever and it, mm -hmm. is, it is fascinating writing because it's Tom Stopper mm -hmm. but it's more history than it is drama. Mm -hmm. And as a, as a person who liked history, I adored seeing it. But as, as you say, mm -hmm. the stage did not speak mm -hmm. in a way. So, and imagine you're already playing Fast Moose with history, and then uh, some TV producer takes your play, and then they play Fast and Loose with what, with what you've played Fast and Loose with. <laughs> and you're trying desperately to hold on to go, whoa, wait, I've already done Fast and Loose, and now it's just, wow, that's different. I have a question for everyone. Why is it that it's, you, we, there is more license to play Fast and Loose with history in the theater, but when history is on television or film, mm -hmm. it gets a much rougher ride if it's played fast and loose with. Why because is that? Because students see it as being truth. Students don't yeah. want to read history. You, youth don't want to, adults, we can watch it and we can go, well, this is a fascinating film, but you know, let's, we'll discuss it in the cafe as to you know, what was truth and what's not. But it, we feel a responsibility to students to say, look, they're not going to read the book. They're not going to read history and they're going to watch this film and they're going to think, oh, well, I guess, you know. I, th I think actually the film and TV play way more fast and loose than theater. Yeah. Oh, with yeah. history? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Oh, big time. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. And we get angry with them because we think, how can you do this? And people are going to think it's, it's real. An because, an I mean, even, even more so because it's, it's not determined by historical accuracy. It's no. determined by the marketplace. Absolutely. And I mean, I, I, so. I'm working on a, 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 a screenplay now an ad, uh, that was optioned from a previous play, and it's American producer. It has an American partner. The American partner wants more Americans in it. So I start to write more Americans, you know? <laughs> it is. The, the, the film and TV, film specifically, the producer is the god. In, mm -hmm. At least in Canada, we've developed a deve the, the playwright, playwriting system has developed where the, the, the playwright still retains power. Mm -hmm. yeah. That doesn't exist in television writing. It doesn't exist in, in screenplay writing. That the producer is everything. He want, it's like Sunset Boulevard. If he wants to set it on the deck of a submarine, your love yeah. story is going to be on the deck Tell of a submarine. Tell you what, Upper Canada Rebellion, I love it, but we're going to set it in Haiti. Exactly. <laughs> that is exactly it. And they think like we're that. We're going to get an American guy, Tom Cruise. I know his people. He's going to star. One more question. And it can be very frustrating, too. I had an experience where um, um, the, uh, the language, I wrote this. Um, big, huge, sprawling play called The Language of the Heart. It's based on a novel by Wallace Thurman, who was a, a, a Renaissance, a Harlem Renaissance writer from the 20s. And I did a reading of it. And, uh, but because it's a huge play, I need a theater company with lar a lot of resources. And so I got a, somebody from this large theater company to see the show, a commercial theater company. And he said, wow, it's great. I like it. But 